So it's wedding season and I have a little bit of a challenge for those of us who are attending weddings this year and those of you who are getting married this year. For those of you who are attending a wedding like me, um, I want to ask you a question. Why do you attend weddings? What's the reason? Is it because it's the one place you can go and dance at the YMCA and not be judged? Is it because you heard that there might be a chocolate fountain or is it because you heard that there's a really hot bridesmaid? All those things are understandable, but my challenge to myself is that I would be a little bit more committed than all of those other things. Um, and I, when I say committed, I don't mean hovering over the DJ stand until they will play House of Pain's Jump Around. I do do that. Um, I mean committed in the sense that you go, okay, my friends are making a vow today to one another and I'm standing here as a witness and I'm making a vow to them that I'm going to stay involved in their life. And so that's the challenge is that those friends that you feel close with say, I'm, I'm going to be there for you guys and I'm going to say, how are you doing? Um, how can I pray for you and how can I serve you? Because everybody's going to go through rough patches in their marriage. And if you haven't stayed involved and you haven't uh, established a relationship, then when they go through those rough patches, if you all of a sudden just jump in and say you want to be a part of the solution, you're going to look judgmental. You're going to be, they're going to be like, why are you trying to tell me what to do now? Or you might not say anything at all. And that's detrimental as well. I mean, Proverbs 27 says, um, you know, uh, an open rebuke is better than hidden love. But you can't openly rebuke someone if you don't have a relationship with them. So that's my challenge. Maintain the relationship. Do actual authentic community with people. And then when they're going through a rough patch, you can speak truth into their life. I have friends who have gone through rough seasons and everyone in their life is saying, get out of the marriage, go. But most people got married because they wanted to stay married. And so they need friends who are going to help them through the rough seasons, not who are going to tell them to run away. And so that's what I'm challenging you with to commit to. Because if you are going to a wedding and you don't want to be in people's business, then you really have no business being at their wedding at all. Okay? <laughs> So then my challenge to those of you who are getting married, I just want to ask you, what does it mean to throw a wedding? Are you doing it because, you know, you just want to play dress up, you want to throw a big party, or you want to finally update your Facebook status and profile picture so all your exes can be jealous of how hot you are now? <laughs> um, you know, again, all good reasons. Um, but I want to challenge you to let people like me stay involved in your life because sometimes we don't even know if you want us asking you those questions and so if you think wow joy this sounds really cool i hope this year people ask us how we're doing and pray for us and ask how they can serve us um, you might be able to help that process by maybe printing something in the in the flyer thing that they hand out at weddings and just say this is what our wedding means to us um, and we want to ask you guys to be involved. We want you to ask us the tough questions over the years. That to me is a wedding full of purpose and intent. Because so often I actually like get sad at how short some of the ceremonies are at weddings. I've actually timed them and it's been kind of pathetic. I mean, I hear so many brides and grooms say, we just, we don't want the ceremony to go too long. We don't want people to get bored. And then they're planning a five or six hour reception. And I'm like, what, what? You know, and, and I was talking to my dad about this and, you know, we're not trying to say that, you know, if you have a five hour long ceremony that somehow you value marriage more, but the reality is that maybe, maybe it's a reflection of what, how you view marriage to some degree, that you just think marriage is going to be this fun, happy party. And, and, and then the minute that marriage gets rough, you, you leave the reception. Think about that. It may not be you, but maybe ask yourself some of those questions because I want to transform how we celebrate weddings and marriages beyond just that day. So whether you're getting married this summer or you are attending a wedding, let's think about the commitment that this celebration entails and what it means beyond the actual wedding day. Let's be friends that say, till death do we part. <laughs> On the next Ask Joy, Joy reveals a sad past that is, dare I say, pathetic. I want to know, just be honest, if I was there, <laughs> if I was at your wedding, what are the chances that you would let me be your flower girl? And know that it's been a lifelong dream. 
and I've never been able to be one. Ever? No. Let me tell you what happened. Sarah Egridge, my mother, which she knows as Mrs. Egridge, um, we were just a poor pastor's family, and um, somebody had asked me to be a flower girl in their wedding, but the, the dress cost $20, and so my mom said no, and I never knew that. I, oh, like, no. a few years ago, I was like, why didn't anybody, so I was a pastor's daughter, why would they not want me, you know, the cute little girl? To, and she's like, somebody did, but we couldn't afford the dress. Joy, I actually thought about inviting you. Um, one of my nieces has the most beautiful red curly hair oh. that anyone has ever had. <laughs> I will, I will I kick her. Think you can handle that. <laughs> She does. I know she does. <laughs> oh, I'm really kind of joking about my fear of redheads. 